Before you start, it's important to make sure that you have the most recent product catalogs, NMDP code, local code, or serology files before you begin the analysis process. If necessary, you can download the latest files from the One Lambda website. To begin, click on the lab type analysis icon on the toolbar here. You can also click here. The CSV file at the top of the list is automatically selected. The first Luminex sample is highlighted. Shown here are the imported but unprocessed CSV files. After a CSV file has been imported, it no longer appears on this list unless you select Include Imported to display the session files you've previously imported. If you combine session files, HLA Fusion will append the word Combined to the beginning of the session ID name. HLA Fusion automatically assigns a session ID, but this can be changed. Remember that session IDs must be unique in your HLA Fusion database. The session date is displayed along with the number of samples in the session. At this point, HLA Fusion has already selected the best catalog match. Click here if you want to choose another product catalog. Select this option and HLA Fusion will assign the sample ID to an otherwise empty patient ID. Select this and HLA Fusion will import and analyze the session files at the same time. The sample patient details table has drop downs which allow you to set or reset the sample date. It displays a lot of information about the session you're going to analyze. There are other drop-downs that allow you to specify the ethnicity and whether it's a patient or donor sample. When opening a new CSV file for analysis, you may see the catalog validation message. If you don't see this message, the catalog with the best bead matches has already been chosen. If the message looks like this one, the catalog at the top of the list has the best bead match. Double click the catalog ID to select it. And click the import button to continue. Now the session files are ready to be imported into HLA Fusion. HLA Fusion will open the navigator so you can select the correct session. And the session samples are analyzed. The tab for the summary screen presents an overview of the analysis of each sample in a session. Best of all, it's color-coded for your convenience. The summary screen has two main sections. The results summary graph displays the quality of results for each sample and corresponds to the details presented below. For example, Match M indicates a result with multiple matches as shown here. Match S, in red, indicates a single matched result. False reactions are displayed in pink. Dark gray indicates a miss, meaning there were no suggested results. Note that the general information about this session is shown here. The summary screen displays a lot of information, too much to fit on one screen. So use your mouse with this scroll bar to reveal more of the session data. These column headings at the top describe what kind of data is shown below. Each row displays the analysis results for each sample in the session.
It's easy to customize this display to show just what you want and in the order you want to see it. Click here to open the field chooser. Here you can add or remove any column of analysis data. Scroll down to see the entire list. When you close the field chooser, HLA Fusion will ask you if you want to save your display selections for later. On the far left of each row, you can place a check mark next to any samples you wish to exclude from further analysis. But you can't exclude all of the samples in a session. You can also change the order in which the columns are displayed. Just select a column heading and drag and drop it where you prefer. In the sample and comment columns, you can click this filter symbol to sort the results by various criteria. Here on the summary screen, you can click on any heading to order or reorder sample data in ascending or descending order. This function is available on every column. With some of the columns, you can hover your mouse to reveal all of the data for a sample. Like this, or this. And hover your mouse pointer here to reveal the sample's annotations. There are two more tabs on the session summary screen. The control value screen allows you to review the quality of the control values for each sample. In each section, the bottom row or x-axis displays the individual sample ID names sorted by well position. The left side or y-axis indicates the control raw data values. This line represents the configured value for the minimum positive control. Again, the x-axis displays the sample ID names and the y-axis indicates the negative control raw data values. Moving down, the negative control summary graph displays the negative control values for each sample in the session. Sample ID names are displayed at the bottom and the negative control raw data values on the left. Hover your mouse to reveal the sample's annotation. The lower bead count summary graph displays the lowest bead count per sample. On either of these three charts, you can right-click on any sample marker and choose to either exclude that sample from the session or immediately analyze the sample. This line indicates the configured value for the minimum bead count. Like the positive control summary graph, this value can be set from the utilities menu. The bead analysis tab allows you to review the global session information for each bead. The information provided here is divided into two sections, which display three different graphs. In the lower panel, the false reaction summary graph displays the number of positive and negative false reactions associated with each bead in the session. The height of the color bar indicates the number of false reactions associated with that bead. In this example, bead number 7 has one false positive. Bead number 12, one false negative. Number 17, two false negatives. The two graphs in the upper panel compare the bead profiles of the current session on the right with a histogram of the same beads run on a one lambda QC panel on the left. There are three ways to examine the results for any bead. You can click on the bead number on the false reaction summary graph here,
Select a bead by clicking this drop down. Or use these arrow indicators to navigate to the first bead, the next bead, or the last bead in the session. Check the Exclude Bead box to globally exclude the current bead from the analysis session. HLA Fusion will reanalyze the session and make a note of this in the comment field at the bottom left of your screen. To scale the histograms on the QC panel graph, enter a value in the Max Scale box and press Enter. This will reset the upper y-axis value of the bead profile histogram for both the QC and the current session. This bar represents the global cutoff value for this session. To adjust it, hover your mouse pointer till it changes and click and drag the bar to set a new cutoff value. If you click the Reset Cutoff button, you can choose which beads and samples will be reset. All bars are colored green, except the current sample, which is colored red. A white bar indicates samples with a low positive control. Of course, you can see information about each bead by hovering your mouse over each bar in the graph. In the comments field at the bottom left of the screen, HLA Fusion keeps track of every change you make in the session. The export button will save a copy of the summary table on your computer or network as an Excel spreadsheet file. Click the preview button to review a copy of the batch summary before printing. The print button will send a report of the summary table directly to the printer. Click the Replace XX Code button if you want HLA Fusion to search the entire session for XX codes and replace them with the most current NMDP codes that you've imported. Clicking the Auto Accept All button will automatically assign the possible results as the final results for all samples in the session. The next step in your analysis with HLA Fusion begins when you double-click on any bead. And that is the subject of the next video in this series. Thanks for watching.